Hello everyone! My name is Raymond, and I create video games. You might know me as the creator of The Street King, but today we'll be talking about my other project, Left Turn Legend. Welcome to my sixth devlog for the greatest oval circuit racing simulator ever made! Left Turn Legend has everything you could ever want from American motorsport. It's got crashes, greedy sponsors, oil, politics, Racing, race cars, racists, and now it's got even more. More cars, more game modes, and more power-ups. So let's jump right in. I've added five new cars representing two additional decades to the game. Let's start with the 70s and work our way up to the 80s. The Blue Jay is a 1970 model a holdout from the late 60s with a fabulously stupid wing for aerodynamics on super speedways like Talladega and Daytona. After the Blue Jays' brief attempt at bending the rules of airbending ended up being banned, the 1973 Patriot came along with a large and muscular frame. Ah, the 1977 Las Vegas. Truly the embodiment of American excess. It's a massive car with a massive honkin' V8 motor. 7 liter V8 motor. 160 horsepower in the V8. It's 200 horsepower, Dave. Okay? How do they get so few horsepower from a V8 motor? The land yacht has never looked so good. Of course, good things can't last forever. So, as the oil crisis forced cars to downsize, the much smaller but equally as luxurious 1981 Emperor came to dominate. If the Emperor's boxy design represents early 80s stock cars, then the 1987 Aerostorm's slope design shows the start of the aero wars in the late 80s that would go deep into the 90s and 2000s. All five of these cars are now fully playable and have their own logos. I've also finally learned Blender. Out of these new cars, I used Blender for the Las Vegas and the Patriot. In previous videos, there was only one way to play Left Turn Legend, but now... There's three, actually. The primary game mode is just called Left Turn Legend. This is what I've been showing in all of my previous devlogs, where you work your way through a massive and endless field of other racers and try to survive for as long as possible. You can't have an oval circuit racer, though, without some dirt track action. This brings us to the next game mode, Dirt Track Demon. This game mode is identical to Left Turn Legend, but since you're on a dirt track, you have significantly less traction and will end up sliding all over the place. Watch out for crazy crashes here where other racers skid out of control, and make use of drifts yourself to get your car pointed in the right direction. What happens if you get tired of turning left? What if you wanted to turn right? Right Turn Rebel is the game mode for you. You can turn right all that you want. If you can avoid oncoming traffic, that is. While you're going around the track clockwise, the whole field is still trying to do their thing and race, so you'd better sharpen your reflexes and dodge them. Implementing these new game modes was actually pretty simple and didn't involve too much code, which is good because everything is turning into spaghetti code already. To create Dirt Track Demon, all I had to do was lower the grip on the cars, add some dirt track textures to the roads, and give the cars dirt particle effects from their wheels. Right Turn Rebel was actually a bit trickier because the player car is now going in the opposite direction, so many of the tricks I used in the other game modes had to be modified. To save resources and prevent your phone from completely exploding, racer cars are actually only allowed to exist in a very narrow range. As soon as they go too far outside of the player's view, they just disappear into thin air. The range where they could spawn and exist had to be reversed for Right Turn Rebel, but once this was done, the rest of the process was actually relatively straightforward. 
These new game modes open up a ton of possibilities for players and make the game a lot more interesting. And I'm super excited to keep working on them and adding more features in the future. In addition to the repair and metal power-ups that I added all the way back before I even published Devlog 1, there are now four new power-ups. The multiplier doubles the amount of points you earn for a short amount of time. What makes it really powerful though, is that you can actually stack them. Pick up two multipliers to get four times the points, and pick up a third power-up to get a max of eight times. The shrink power-up uses possibly stolen military technology with some sus origins to shrink every single car in the field except yourself. These tiny cars are almost like bugs, and you can crush them instantly to take them down for big bonuses. Don't talk to me or my son ever again. The bomb power-up brings in the firepower that every American supposedly loves. Collect it, and every single car in the field will explode spectacularly. Be careful not to get taken out yourself when they rain back down from the sky. The final power-up, Freeze Touch, makes it so that any car you touch gets encased in a big block of ice. Cars don't get instantly wrecked by this. If they have enough speed when they unfreeze, they can keep going. Each of the four new power-ups has a relatively simple implementation, with the exception of maybe the Freeze power-up. The multiplier simply multiplies all of your points earned and the Shriek power-up works by scaling down your opponent's cars and reducing their masses. The bomb applies a randomized upwards force on each car to get them to fly up at varied heights, and combining this with some flavorful particle effects leads to a pretty convincing result. The Freeze power-up has a bit more going on. When a car gets hit, we need to figure out exactly how big or small the ice cube should be. I wanted the ice cubes to match the size of the car. To do this, we can take a look at the car's 3D model. 3D models are all made of triangles, so what we can do is take a look at the vertices of every single triangle in the model and find the highest vertex, the lowest one, the furthest right, and so on. After doing this, we have a pretty good idea of how big the ice cube needs to be to cover the entire car and all of its vertices but I make it a little bigger to avoid issues where the car and the ice cube end up intersecting each other. This would lead to ugly effects like Z-fighting. Check out Devlog 3 for an explanation of Z-fighting and how I avoided it in other areas of the game. This brings us to the end of my sixth devlog for Left Turn Legend, but stay tuned to the end of the video for bonus gameplay clips of all three of the current game modes. Also. I'd like to give a huge thank you to my King Patrons, GrandM67 and TLM10's Gaming, for supporting me and my games. If you want to help out too, please consider checking out my Patreon page in the video description. Feel free to comment if you have any questions, thoughts, or feedback, and give the video a like and sub to the channel if you liked what you saw. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you all next time.